I'm G Rob back with you and today we're gonna get that fuel pump on that 63 Sprite and button up all the little electrical issues. Let's go. So now I got the midget back into the shop here and we decided to go ahead in this case to go back to the original mechanical pump. It'd be more cost effective than putting an electric pump on it since I've had a lot of problems lately with some of these aftermarket pumps just not working like they should. They tend to, the last couple I put on, I put out too much pressure and then the regulators don't tend to work all that well anymore either. It's a bit hit or miss game. So these are only around 40 bucks. And also figure with all that wiring the way it looks, it's better to not have any more electrical load on the car anyway. So I got to fix a few of the lines down here because the line has been cut right here where it goes into the, supposed to go into the pump and then the line coming up to the carburetors with the Y is missing. But I have one of those sitting here I can put on it. So I'm gonna keep this installation really simple on this. I'm gonna use a longer piece of hose, of course. I'll just go ahead and put a piece of hose in here to reconnect this back up. I'll take this bracket off, which originally held the fuel pump. And I don't normally use these big filters, but that's what I have sitting on the shelf at the moment. And I've found over the time that these brackets here, which actually hold the uh, defrost hoses on an MGB, just work really great for holding one of these filters. So I'll just put that to this bolt here and then that'll mount everything so I can just bring a hose up to that and then from there in be done. And when setting up something like this you should always mock up the air cleaners to make sure that the line will clear the air cleaners or at least go around it. So while this may not be the absolute best way to set this up, it's cost effective, it will save the owner a lot of labor time, and is perfectly acceptable. Because all this is running, nothing's gonna actually rob on the steering shaft or you know, be in danger of melting from any heat. And uh, this is nice and stable, so it won't go anywhere. And of course, go ahead and get rid of this extra wire and undo it from the dash. Just get rid of that thing. All right, so now we got it running. I have done no tuning on this thing. This is how it came in. But we do have a funky noise in it. Something's a little loose. I'm going to guess it's in the generator or something. Ah, well. The fan just spins on the back side of the pulley, which means the pulley's not tight enough to hold the fan in place. All right, well, let's see how loose this nut is on this generator. Oh, it's nice and loose. That should stop it from spinning and making that noise and keep air moving through it like it's supposed to. So the nice thing about using these see-through plastic fuel filters here is now you can actually see down there whether you got sediment coming in out of the gas tank or not and when it needs replaced really easily. So the next thing we got to do is put the brake light switch on there which is really as simple as loosening it up and you know, pulling it out and quickly putting the other one back in because you can you will lose a little bit of brake fluid out of this. Now then you should ultimately 
bleed the brakes afterwards. Now the only brake light sw switch currently available is the one with the spade terminals on it. So I will have to change the ends of the wires to put this one on. So it looks like this brake switch is really in there. It does not want to move. And since I'm not worrying about keeping it, I'm just using a pair of vice grips to get a hold of it because this is not one of the ones like this that you can just put a regular wrench on. There's actually a special tool for it, and I don't even remember if I have that tool any or not. But because it's so tight, I need to get something on the back side of this to hold this to keep that from twisting and doing anything to the brake lines while I break it loose. All right, so that's got it broke loose. So now I can just Now a lot of people go crazy with Teflon tape and all this stuff, but this is a pipe thread. So the further you screw it in, the tighter it gets and it's supposed to be self-sealing. Doesn't actually need any Teflon tape on it. I know some people out there will disagree with me, but I never use it and I've never had a leak. So there we only lost like one or two drops of brake fluid. So I should be able to actually get away without bleeding the brakes, but it'd be a good idea to. Now this is just a simple switch. You have continuity or you don't. So when it comes to these two wires, it doesn't actually matter which one's on which terminal because these are this is a positive circuit. So all you're doing is making contact and going through. So it just doesn't matter. So I actually misspoke earlier on the brake light switch. Those were always spade terminals. Just the one that was on this one had been a replacement one with different terminals than original. So here's the one that came off of it. Um, actually, that's probably one from an old Ford or something, which is actually was a common part to be used on these things. People go to just Napa or something, and there was, there's one that fits just fine, but it has different terminals. So now that we have the new brake light switch in, let's see if the brake lights work. And we have success. Now I just got to see why the turn signals don't work. All right, so the owner of the car didn't actually bring it in to have me do any tuning to it, but after putting the fuel pump on, it's just running so bad, I can't get it to stay running without having to choke on. So I thought first thing I would look at was the foot bowls and stuff, and I did find a piece of rubber stuck in the needle and seat here, and it still runs bad, but I noticed this has had a new jet put in here, and that jet is as high as it can possibly go. And this one almost as high as it can possibly go. Now, with that other fuel pump on there, it might have been putting out too much pressure. It might have been somewhat overcoming the needles and seats. And then the fuel level was way too high. And it might have been struggling to lean it, lean it out and just had them up that high trying to get it lean enough to run. So I'll go ahead and do a quick readjustment on these just to try to get the run a little bit better. All right, so I'm reaching the carburetors up a little bit. Now it'll actually stay running. Before it was just popping and backfiring and just wouldn't run at all without the choke. Oh, I got the turn signals working. Turns out that was actually a very easy problem because instead of all of this wiring actually being a real problem and not getting power or whatever, they literally just had the wires in the wrong positions on the flasher unit. So once I, once I chased the wires and 
determined that the colors were actually correct, put them in the right order, they work just fine. All right, so next time I'll be buttoning this car up to get it back to its owner, but we're also gonna end up diagnosing a running issue that I found while I was test driving it. As always, if you like what I'm doing here, give me a like, subscribe, share with your friends, and comment below. I read them all. Don't always comment back on everything, but I read them all. As always, this is MG Rob. Later.